from that big complex world to another big complex world. And that is the world of Josh Warner, who is a fantastic individual who's been working with us for, for a long time now. Um, as I mentioned, he's in the middle of his final exams. And so um, massive thanks, Josh, for coming along and being with us here today. Um, Josh is going to give us insight into a, well, something that he's been working on for a little while now. Um, and I'm going to pan the stage across to you. So Josh, if you want to share that screen, and introduce okay. yourself. Um, I will. I will relinquish the reins. Um, and actually, the the end note from that conversation we shared was a lovely segue. It was, yeah. Course, communication is the key. Over to you, Josh. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a bit weird, honestly, to be on this kind of end of things before. Um, but I'm <laughs> very thankful for it. So yeah, I'm I'm Josh. I'm a final year Earth and Planetary Science student at Imperial College London. And I just kind of wanted to like briefly share what I kind of thought was one of the biggest problems in mining and one of the biggest problems that mining faces. Kind of from my perspective, as someone who's recently, fingers crossed, going to be finishing my course all being well, but two more exams to do. So yeah, it's this kind of came from this is gonna sound a bit boring, like dinner party conversation, but like when I like speak to some friends sometimes um at parties and I ask them, can you name like five mining companies? I just have my own curiosity. Just kind of wanting to see like what what people's thoughts are and not a single person can name like one mining company and i thought okay great like maybe it's just maybe it's just the friends i'm speaking to uh but then i asked someone on my course who does basically geology and i can only name one which i found a bit concerning but i kind of made me realize like there is no kind of understanding of the importance of mining um with people generally and even within my university department by itself which is a bit unusual considering how important of an industry it is globally you know the phrase goes if you can't grow it you have to mine it so i kind of wanted to give this talk to kind of see kind of share this uh, perspective and also offer a solution potential solution but before i begin uh i've made like some pictures and like logos of what i want to communicate they're not like no, i'm not working with any brands or anything so i'm not trying to um yeah there's not alluding to any real life companies and organizations you do not sue me. I have not started paying off my student loan yet. It would not be good to do that. So, okay. So why I'm giving this talk generally. I'm going to say some points which I think are relatively uncontroversial with people here on this panel. So first of all, we need metals for the green energy transition, whether it's lithium for car batteries or, um, or your copper for your electric vehicles or wind turbine blades, you need to get metals from it. And there are kind of two ways you can get these metals. You can either recycle them or you can mine them. Um, and currently, recycling is not enough. We don't have enough of this metal uh, recycled to not need mining anymore. So as a result, yeah, we need mining. So these kind of like logical steps. And I would I would argue that that's pretty well understood. But then this is again this is from my perspective, uh, my my personal views of what people just generally think about mining in the general public. So there's an agreement. Yeah, we need metals for the green energy transition. You hear it on the news, you're lifting through car batteries or your shortage for chips is due to like mining shortages. They understand that metals are important for the green energy transition. You know, you can recycle metal. Scrap metal is like, scrap metal recycling is quite a big thing in the UK. You hear about it, you see people like collecting scrap. There's an understanding of that. However, there seems to be kind of a lack of understanding that mining can also provide be a source of metals. When people think mining, generally, this is quite a, a UK centric view, but people tend to think coal mining because that's kind of the industry that happens here. So, and there's also to kind of that disconnect. And also there's not really an understanding that recycling at the moment is not enough. So as a result of these two kind of points, people tend to think we don't need mining. Well, that's fair enough, but well, I don't think it's fair enough, but it's, why is that the case? So I very much believe that this is kind of a result of lack, a lack of understanding about the importance of mining in the general public. But this is crucially, this is no one's fault. If we start going around and saying to people on the street, why can't you name me a, a sediment hosted or deposit type? They're gonna be like, well, what are you talking about? What does that even mean? So this is it's like a, yeah, this is no one's fault. And it's on us as an industry to fix this, but this is not something where we need to go and kind of like take control of the narrative because this is not, it's not like a greenwashing thing. You have to kind of just put our perspective out there. So I think right now at the moment, there's a lot of anti-mining talk going on. Um, but if we just kind of, share the importance of mining with the public then that can kind of balance out but it's not it, yeah it's trying to emphasize that it's not something where we go out we take control of this back to don't let like uh, like opposite views happen i think it's something it's on us as an industry to fix by kind of bringing everyone together and talking about it like events like this 
but talking to the public and stuff. But some of the consequences of this lack of understanding um, about the importance of mining. Well, first of all, it's harder generally for mining companies to get funding. And so there's less options for smaller mining companies as well. As at the OECD conference, hearing about small mining companies finding it hard to access funding because they're kind of viewed just completely negatively um, by public. Um, and instead of people asking questions like, can mining, reform for mining be beneficial, kind of taking a more nuanced perspective, this, these kind of conversations don't even happen. Like at OECD, like Sarah said, like, these conversations are happening. How are you going to be talking about the importance of wind turbines and solar panels if you're not going to also acknowledge the fact you need metals to do that and how you're going to do it responsibly? So people kind of see this and just say, well, no, all mining bad. There's kind of no, there's no nuances, no kind of further discussion. And when you stop talking about it, then you can't kind of work to be better. Thirdly, there's kind of a lack of interest as well in joining the industry. And I think this is something which McKinsey put out a report on recently. You can kind of see how mining is ranked the worst, is the most like, unattractive for young people wanting to join the industry. And it's also interesting to note that oil is slightly better. And I, it got me thinking, like, why is this the case? Uh, so these are pictures of three uh, petrol stations in the UK. And this is, this is not, I'm not saying it's a, a confirmed reason or not, but it's just what I think may be the, the reason for why oil is doing slightly better. When you're going to fill up your petrol from your petrol station, you see these brands, you see these companies, you're making the association of, I'm driving a car, I'm getting petrol, it comes from Shell, it comes from BP, it comes from Esso. You're kind of, you're kind of linking these two industries and oil has a really bad rap. Like you, you see a negative news all the time. Yet this is an industry where it's very, has quite a strong public advertisement campaign. There's stuff on TV with Esso saying, we'll help you buy I don't know, a bicycle to get to work or something. I don't know, I don't think they said that, but like uh, some sort of transportation thing. Of, yeah. They didn't say you're going to buy your bike, uh, but if they, had, they kind of allude to being more climate focused, I guess, than mining companies and all kind of willing to be more progressive. And I'm not saying mining companies aren't, but my, plenty of them are. It's just there's no kind of communication of this with the public. And so when you've got when you've got people negatively criticizing oil companies and gas companies, but then also seeing, oh yeah, I'm going to my petrol station, I'm filling up my car, and I've got, I'm filling up from Shell, from BP, or from Esso, or some other companies, they're making that link. So that's kind of why I think that potentially oil and gas may have, may be kind of more attractive. People are kind of more aware of it, more aware of like its positives. Um, like that. But that's just quite my own opinion. So going forward, I. I think it's quite clear that mining, the importance of mining needs to be communicated, communicated to the public. But how, how do you kind of like make that tangible link between your products and mining companies? Well, this is kind of where TerraTrace comes in. This is an idea this show's been working on. But the idea is potentially you could use like a package labeling system in the same kind of way where it works on the food. I've got on the next couple of slides, but you would have your metal kind of the standard that's kind of doing this reporting and kind of an overall responsibility score. Of course, this is a massive simplification. There's loads of challenges to actually getting this working. Like Leanne Kemp earlier this week gave a brilliant talk about how it's currently the current challenges that people are facing doing this and blockchain and how it could be used. Um, but this is a way, I, I believe, where people can start to make that connection when they're going out buying a phone or buying a bottle that what they're holding in their hand come, has metals in it, first of all, and also comes from the ground somewhere. Um, and you can potentially scan a QR code, learn more about the different mine organizations and companies if you want to learn more information. But what is key, I think, about this is you don't need to have an understanding of metals and mining and mining practices to kind of know whether something is being done more responsibly or not, in the same way that I'm not a food nutrition expert, right? So these are in the UK, I don't know if this is the same around the world, but you have food labels on packaging and products. And nutrition is an immensely complex field of study yet they've, they've found a way to simplify it down of course this is not going to be true for everyone not it's not always going to be the case that you need these amount of sugars depending on your different conditions and stuff so it's it's just a reference guide it's just an initial step for people to start making more informed decisions about things um yeah so i it's it's just to me an example of how you can kind of simplify quite complex topics down uh, it's obviously not perfect, and neither would this be, honestly. Like, is, how can you say that? Copper's got a sustainability score of 7.6, but it's trying to get that initial step. 
And crucially as well, it's accessible for people who don't understand mining. Um, they can see that I make decisions. Um, if you start advertising this kind of way, this kind of doing this to um, start advertising it and being this package labeling system with some benefits, people can make more informed purchases in the same way food. You don't obviously, if you're going to choose, sometimes I choose to have a pizza. That's like my own choice. So it's just, you can make the more informed uh, decision and more purchase if you want. Um, also, there's going to start to be, I believe, a differentiation of mining companies right now. If you're if you're a really well run mining company and a really poor mining company, there's no kind of real difference viewed by the public um, between the two of them. It's just kind of viewed as all bad. But if you can start to differentiate that, then you'll be like, okay, we need copper mining. But if we're going to need copper mining, let's do it well. And um, then also, this I think it's quite a big problem with the amount of reporting standards out there. Hopefully, over time, this is going to kind of come all together. And kind of getting these standards out there to the public, I think is one way of doing that. You can kind of say, for example, fair trade, they've got all these different things, but they're kind of under one umbrella. Or they, they do gold and they do bananas and other things. So and chocolate. Um, so yeah, standards can become more aligned and commodity producers can be more broad if we're being more responsible. So these are my conclusions kind of run through this talk. Uh, I think the lack of understanding is damaging. Ultimately, regardless of whatever industry that you're in, it is preventing small mining companies from gaining access to funds to be able to help work in their local communities. Um, the lack of understanding is also no one's fault, like I said before, it's, but it's on us as an industry to change that. Mining also needs to be more visible now. If we're going to continue to have COP conferences, you need to start talking about mining and you need to start including it in your discussions, which I think is an uncontroversial opinion on this panel. but. I think the general public need to be more aware of it. And mining as an industry needs to have more of an interface with the public. Otherwise, it's just going to continue doing what it's doing, continue receiving public criticism. But that's just not a way to go forward. And you have to communicate this with the public. It all is good and well doing this on panels and having mining codes that are kept within the industry. That is great. We we're holding ourselves accountable. But then when people are not talking about this or not even acknowledging the fact that you need metals, it's going to cause other problems. Um, and yeah, and finally, when you communicate with people, it has to be very accessible. If it's not accessible and you start having systems where it requires almost like a degree to understand what you're saying about it, people are just not going to pay attention. And it needs to be in a, a format where it's very simple and you can just easily make decisions. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening. I did kind of just rush through it, but yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Josh. Everybody, a round of applause for the fabulous Josh Warner. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, now, please post your questions into the chat or into the q and um, I've got a couple of things for you, Josh. And so I guess, you know, if you think about a fair trade banana or whatever, me as the end user who's about to eat that banana, I, the, the choice, et cetera, and the understanding is in my hands. And I guess what you're doing here is you're saying, well, how do you make it easier for that end consumer to understand where the thing that they're holding on to, where it actually comes from? And so it's through that where you've actually got some like direct and indirect benefits. So thinking about who who is the person who needs to put this information on the tin or on the iPhone or whatever it is, I guess does that sit with that manufacturer or whatever that Thing is is that correct yeah so it would kind of be almost like a more of like an opt-in system if you want to share this information initially but i i think crucially what i was trying to get across in the presentation is that mining does as an industry need to be more visible to the general public it needs to have more of an interface with the general public and it needs to be able to share what it's doing with the public and right now there's only ever negative news there's never any positives um and if, for example, oil companies, even if there is any negative news, at least when people are filling up their car, they know where that what that oil is actually doing. They know why oil companies exist. But mining companies, they don't have any of that. You, you don't have any of that kind of when if you want to go buy metal for something, you just kind of assume it comes from like B and Q, which is a proper home, or other places, which is like a home depot place. It's like you kind of you're not making that connection with what you're actually holding it comes out of the ground somewhere and that involves like people's livelihoods and the technology and the work that goes behind it so yeah what i kind of really wanted to, to emphasize in the talk was just it, then there needs to be kind of change in this way now and it has to be done to the public and um yeah but it would involve people kind of 
manufacturers wanting to want to share that information, put it on their devices so people can get more more informed. I should answer your question. So just like <laughs> no, it's great. Thanks, Josh. And so you've got the okay, so you've got the the kind of outwards communication and that sharing and actually treating people with respect to say you can make your own mind up with regards mm-hmm. to this. But I think there's another thing here, and that is one of the themes that we've been looking at this week in terms of creating trust within within the sectors as a whole is this um, the theory that if a mining company is acting in a more responsible way, then the product that they're producing should get a premium. So, for example, copper that has been dug out the ground, processed, et cetera, in a way that, that is providing all of those sustainable benefits, et cetera, to the community, to the environment, that should fetch a slightly higher price at market yes. compared to something where goodness knows what has happened to it. Yeah. And I guess that this transparency that you're putting on the table here is a mechanism to try and create that differentiation because there are lots of people who be saying look we should get this differentiation in some cases we're seeing case studies where that's happening but really when people are being truly honest that differentiation hasn't started yet so is Mm -hmm. this another thing here josh in terms of some of that kind of indirect benefits yeah so get that drive yeah so I think the reason why there's not a lot, not a lot of companies are seeing that benefit is just a lack of awareness from people like the end consumer. As a, and as the end consumer becomes more educated about what they're actually purchasing and where it comes from, then I believe they're going to start asking more questions about or putting more pressure on the companies who are sourcing or producing these like products. Like, where are you getting your materials from? What are the practices that are going on when you're doing this? Can you guarantee there's no child labour in your product, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So it's it's once people start becoming more aware of that. Then these kind of things are going to start happening for price differentiation. But to get people more aware of that in the first place and to start having these conversations, you need to kind of tell them that mining and metals are important. Make them aware of the fact that you have metals in your phone, which sounds like a really obvious thing, but I just don't think that many people even think about it. It doesn't even cross their mind. And um, yeah, so that price differentiation is a benefit that will happen. And I think it is something that needs to happen because ultimately, if you've got a fully electric fleet and you're producing one kilogram of iron ore, at the end of the day, that's worth basically the same as one kilogram of iron ore from a place that's doing it in a much worse way. But that does that needs to start making that change needs to start being that change needs to happen. Basically, people need to start realizing those two things are separate, and it's no good just keeping with the industry when we know that ourselves. With at the end of the day, the public are the people who are going to be paying for this, and so they need to be the ones who actually know that. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much, Josh. Putting the power in the, the hands of those end users. Absolutely fantastic. So everybody, please put your hands together for the fabulous Josh Warner. Thank you very much. Brilliant. <laughs>